Welcome to another PropFrax on Air tutorial. This time I would like to talk about remote voice tracking. So, of course, you need two instances of PropFrax on Air one running on the server and one running on the client side where you want to perform the remote voice tracking. The client can be either located in the internet cloud somewhere in your home office, for example, or it can be within your local area network within the same LAN. So in my example, I will consider having a server sitting in your main studio and you want to do remote voice tracking from your home office. So what needs to be configured on the server side? Let's take first a look to the general settings. There are a few things to recognize. The first thing is you need to enable the GPIO extension service. This is done here. Enable GPIO extension service. Remember the port number. In my case, case, I have selected 9042. This is the port number you're connecting to later on from your client side. The next thing you need to know is your general authorization password. Remember that as well. You need also this password when you connect from the client side. So that's all you have to do to configure remote voice tracking on the server, plus a few other things. Under encoding and recording, you will find a small new group remote voice tracking. You can specify a playlist template path. This is the path underneath all your remote voice tracking sessions will be stored on the server. If you leave that empty, as I did in my case here, then the default directory in your PropFrax application user data directory will automatically be chosen. And you can choose a compression profile. The compression profile is important because you want to maybe compress your audio files before they are transmitted to the client. So in my case, I've chosen a low quality setting profile. You can define your compression profiles here. Define encoder profiles. Just click on it, enter a new or edit an existing profile, for example, low quality and specify a default encoder. In my case, I have selected the WMA, the Windows Media Audio Encoder. This one is fast and is quite good with compression. If I double click on the WMA, the Windows Media Encoder, I can define the settings. In my case, my low quality profile means a bit rate of 48 kilobits per second. That's quite good. So make sure to define a compression profile and select the default encoder correctly because the default encoder is the one being used for remote voice tracking. So that's been selected here. Anything else? Not here, but of course in your scheduler. When you enter your program scheduler, you will notice that you now, let me edit for example one entry, you're now enabled to specify a new option for each program entry. The option is called Allow Remote Voice Tracking. Make sure it's checked because only those program entries are being allowed to do remote voice tracking on. That's it. So set your encoder compression profile, define the GPIO extension service, remember the port number and your general authorization password, and make sure your program entries have the allow remote voice tracking option set, like here. That's it. Okay, now we're on the client side. On the client side, there's not much to do. Just click on the new tab and select the new remote voice tracking item. Very easy. A remote voice tracking download wizard will start. The first thing you have to do is you have to enter the server URL. The server URL is basically an IP address or DNS name, plus it is the port number of the GPIO extension service running on the server. You can just specify those two things, the rest will be added. Then you have to specify a client name. Currently, this is not being used, though you can type in whatever name. I've chosen Radio 42, and now I have to enter my authorization password, also the one configured on the server side, and then I just click on Connect. On the next page, I have to select a remote program, a scheduler entry existing on the server side, the ones where 
the option allow remote voice tracking has been selected. Or I can just click on these three dots here to search for a program. In my case, I want to remote voice track my Good Morning Show. Good Morning with Burnt. So I select, select the entry, click OK. It's been confirmed here. I can double check it, the date and time. So this is for tomorrow. And I click on Next. On the next page, I have to specify a local base folder. That's the folder where all the remote session tracks are being saved, where my editions are being configured, etc. So that's just a local folder. Note that the effective path, there will be always a date and time being added. And here I can also, on the client side, specify if I want to use the server-sided compression mode or not. Remember, if I'm, for example, a program director sitting just next door in a secondary office and I want to edit and pre-edit all my programs for the next day, for example, I might not want to use the compression because it just takes a little bit longer, but I can natively use the original audio files because transmitting those files over the local area network might be fast enough. In my case, I'm sitting at home, so I use the compression format. If I now click on Next, everything will be prepared on the server side and downloaded. I have to wait a little bit. The playlist is being prepared based on the script sitting on the server. So everything is executed now on the server side. Now on the server side, all the files are being compressed and collected and being prepared. And once that is ready, so currently all the files are being compressed. And once everything is prepared on the server side, the download of those files will automatically start to my local machine. So we have to wait a little bit. So that's basically the compression. compression, And as you can see, the compression is quite fast. And now I'm downloading the tracks. Downloading file 4, 5, 6 of 12, 7, etc. And as you can see, I'm connected through the internet quite fast. So. In your case, if you're having a slow internet connection, it might be slower. And once everything is done, congratulations, completed. I just have to click on Finish to start my remote voice tracking session. And now all my data is being prepared and loaded. The overlays, which are being defined, for example, on the server side for advertising or for uh, time announcements, etc., are being placed at the dynamic containers in here, and you can see Everything is there. My audio tracks, I can pre-listen to them. Yeah, just great. OK, let's do some voice tracking. Just very quickly, two things. So for example, between the, these two tracks, I want to add voice tracking. So I just select my playlist, click on voice tracking. And whoops, that's been open on the secondary screen. Here, my remote voice tracking session comes up. And I can start my voice tracking. Position it here and start recording your stuff. A wonderful good morning. This is Victor Heinz, Can't Stop. You're listening to Radio 42, music for lounge lovers. My name is Bernd Niedergesees, and next up, we will have Atlantic Star. Watch a feel inside. Good morning. So, once I recorded one voice track, I can pre-listen to the stuff. I can say, yeah, looks everything very good. I might align this one to here. Or, uh, whoop, let's do it that way. Yeah, that looks good. Close it. And then I want to also attenuate my volume. Let's take a look if the settings are good. They are good. And I'm OK with it. You can see new voice track is being added in the middle. Let's do another one. Here, for example, another voice tracking session. And you know the job. Voice tracking has been there for a while. Let's start here and let's do our voice tracking. Wonderful good morning. We have now 8 o'clock and 10 minutes. You are listening to Radio 42. My name is Bernd Niedergesees. Yes, you are listening to our morning show and I hope you have a good jump start into the morning. Next up, we have Louis Vega and a Mozart Lounge Jazzy and Groove Remix. And this is the best sound in the city. Enjoy your morning. Okay. Let's align this a little bit again. Uh, but that looks good. We start maybe here. 
and we are fine with that. We still attenuate our volume. Yep, looks good. We can pre-listen to it. Yeah, looks good. Sounds good. Perfect. Click OK. Next voice track session edit. So you can do and prepare your entire stuff. You can even do more. You can even say, ah, the Jacksons wait. That's a nice track, but Doobie Brothers, no, that needs to be shifted down one. And Jones Girls, no, I don't want to have that track in here. Let's find a better one. So I want to have a James Brown track in here. So yeah, time after time fits perfectly for the morning. I add that track here, delete that one, and off we go. So I even can add new audio tracks locally. They will then also be uploaded. Okay, once I'm done with my remote voice tracking, I can just close my playlist. Save it. Oh yes, of course I want to save it. And once everything is saved, I'm automatically asked, hey, do you want to now upload your remote voice tracking session? And I can click on yes, or I can even click on no. If I click on no, let's do it. Everything is saved, and I can just continue later on, because maybe I uh, need to have a break and uh, bring my kids to the kindergarten, and uh, once I return, I want to continue re my remote voice tracking session. So I simply click on remote voice tracking again and the system automatically recognizes, oh, there was a non-uploaded session. Do I want to restore it? I said, yes. Now I want to continue. I do some, some more voice tracks. I rearrange new tracks, whatsoever. Finally, I'm done, and I want to close that. Same game. I'm asked, do you want to start now the upload remote voice tracking session? Yes, I want to upload it. Now I'm done. I finished my thing. I click on yes. Same thing. First, I have to connect to the server. I type in my password, and now the upload wizard has been started. It confirms everything. Yes, do you really want to upload? Yes, I want to confirm that. I click on Next, and everything is being prepared. And the files are being uploaded automatically. Four files, my voice tracks, my new tracks I've added, successfully done. And then I'm asked, do you want to physically delete all my session files? I say, yeah, I don't need them anymore. Finish. That's it on the client okay, side. Okay, now we're back on the server side. So let's take a look what happened to my server. Let's go and enter the program scheduler. Yeah, it shows me that something has been changed. I double click on the entry the other user has just edited and have uh, take a look. Oh yeah, the playlist template was created and generated on the 5th of August, so today for an entry for tomorrow at 14 o'clock. Fine, so it must have been burned doing his remote voice checking. And a playlist template has been created. Uh -huh, a script, a new one. So let's take a look how that looks. You can click on Edit, and I will see that it con now contains a load playlist entry. Ah, that must have been the playlist entry uh, generically, which have just been uh, edited. Oh, fine, okay. So it's there. Can we also take a look at it? Can, for example, a program director double check that everything is okay? Yeah. You can just right click on the entry and select Open Playlist. Open Template Playlist. That's the one Bernd has just from his home edited. And you will see it exactly looks like on the remote side. And even here, I can play the stuff. I can double check. Okay. Is everything okay? Ah, here are his voice tracks. Ah, yep. I can pre-listen to it. I can open the CGU editor. I can just align things if I want, or if I'm not touching anything, the program Burnt has just uploaded is running exactly like this. That's remote voice tracking. Thank you very much.